And when you look at the, 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 the language that he uses, you'll understand he is not talking about some form without the reality. He is not talking about what Peter rebuked them for in, in 2 uh, Timothy, having the form but denying the power to make it real. He's not talking about the form that the Pharisees and the Sadducees had that Jesus had to came, come and rebuke and tell them they were a bunch of hypocrites going to hell because they looked good outside. They had a form of righteousness, but inside they were full of dead men's bones, uncleanness and hypocrisy. God. He's talking about a reality. He's talking about Jesus Christ gave his own blood. He shed his blood on that cross. He brought forth a fountain that would remove, that would take away every sin and make us holy and righteous in order that we could fulfill the mystery of God, which would become one flesh with Jesus Christ. Because he will not be joined to your sin. Come on, sir. Come on, sir. God cannot dwell with unrighteous, with idolatry, with, with sin. He won't do it. He is a holy God. You know what the Bible says? Be ye born again one time, and we've made a we we made a complete uh, a thing about it. But you know what? How many times the Bible tells us to be holy? Over six hundred times we are exhorted to be holy in the Bible. Yeah. Uh, and we don't believe it. Jesus is not coming for a lukewarm, watered down. Uh, 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 sinful, tarnished, spotted, blemished, worldly, self-seeking, self-centered, prideful uh, 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 church. He is coming for a holy and righteous bride without spot or blemish. Why? Because that's what he bought and paid for. My Lord. And to give him anything less is an affront to God. It is spitting in the face of God. Oh, Jesus. He paid and bought for that he might have a church that he can present to himself that is glorious and splendor without spot or wrinkle or any such thing that is holy and blameless. He is talking about a literal work of the supernatural power of the, of, of the blood of Jesus Christ to change you from the inside out, to cleanse the inside of the cup so the outside can be clean too. My Lord, yes, yes, yes. But see, we don't believe in the power of the blood anymore. We don't believe in the, in the power of his redemption anymore. And so the church looks just the opposite. But I guarantee when Jesus comes, he is not going to have the, 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 the spotted, blemished whore standing next to him. That's right. That's my right. God, my God. Come on. Come on. He's coming with, after a bride that has bridal love, that, that, that pleases him, that obeys him, that lives for him. That's why Jesus gave his life on the cross of Calvary. That was the very purpose of redemption, that we would be a holy bride. And notice what he says. When he comes, he's going to present to himself. He's not coming back to get you holy. He's not coming back to get you That's cleaned right. up. That's he's right. not coming back That's to zero right. your sin. He already did it. He's yeah. finished. That work is over. He is not coming back to deal with sin. He dealt with sin once and for all. He removed your sin once and for all. You are free indeed. It is done. It is finished. It is over. He's coming back for people that have embraced that work and are now holy and righteous and watching and waiting and longing for His coming. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. The Lord makes it pretty, pretty plain what He's coming back for. What he expects to find concerning his church. There's a multitude of scriptures. Let me just give you a few. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 4. Even in, even as in his love he chose us. He actually picked us out for himself as his own in Christ. Before the foundation of the world. That we should be holy and blameless in his sight. Even above reproach before him in love. What's your name? Your destiny in God was to be holy. Before you even were created. Before God even created this earth. He had already planned and purposed and destined. That his and again, he's not talking about some form. He's not talking about some 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 figment of your imaginations saying one thing with your lips, but your heart is far from him. He's talking about a true holiness by the blood of Jesus Christ, a supernatural work to come in, to come down, to put his hand inside of your heart with the blood of Jesus and to wipe out, to destroy, to cut off that hard, stony heart and to pluck out all the idolatry, disobedience, unfaithfulness, sin and flesh, to wash you clean in the blood of Jesus. Amen. And that's why he says, he chose us to be holy before the foundation of the world. And then he tells them, he said, that you'll be blameless in his sight. When he looks at you, he sees you are blameless, not in form, but in reality. That you are in, uh, even above reproach before him in love. Every scripture you look about, talking about something again, it is talking about a literal, practical work, because that's what Jesus came to do. 
And to believe anything less than that is to say that the blood of Jesus Christ is no better than the blood of bulls and goats, which cannot take your sin away. Hi, God. Come on, sir. Colossians 122. Yet now has Christ reconciled you to God in the body of his flesh through death in order to present you holy and faultless and irreproachable in his Father's presence. Again, to present you. You've already done. You've already embraced what you're already holy. And he's going to present you to him. Why? Because he has done the work through the death of Christ upon that cross. In order that he can present you holy, faultless, and irreproachable. My Lord. If you can be reproached, you're not holy. Mm. <laughs> That's what he said. Philippians 2.15 That you may show yourselves that means it's got to be real. Somebody's looking at you. That you may show yourself to be blameless and guileless, innocent and uncontaminated, children of God without blemish, faultless, unrebukable, in the midst of a crooked and wicked generation, among whom you are seen as bright lights in this dark world holding out to it and offering to all men the word of life, so that in the day of Christ I have, may have something in which exultantly to rejoice and glory in, in that I did not run my race in vain or spend my labor to no purpose. Do you hear what he's saying? Uh, that you can be seen by others. That others look at you and they see you as being blameless, guileless, innocent, and uncontaminated. They recognize you as a child of God without blemish. Mm -hmm. Right in the midst of a wicked and perverse generation. My God, in the yes. midst of the darkness. Yes, yes. In the midst of all the corruption yes. and ungodliness. Yes, in the Lord. midst of that school system that's so corrupted by sin. In yes. the midst of the government that is so polluted and contaminated with sin and ungodliness. In the midst of, of, of neighborhoods that are just filled with violence and ungodliness and sin. In the midst of the darkness. In the midst of the gross darkness. The gross sin of others. That there'll be a people. Hallelujah. That there'll be a children of God. I am seen as a bright light. That takes you back to Daniel chapter 12, where he said there will be a people in the last days that will be like the stars of the firmament. That, that, that shine like the stars of the firmament, doing what? Turning many to righteousness. Turning them to righteousness. Not this facade that the church preaches that, oh, I'm holy and righteous, but in reality, look at me, I'm just, just as worldly and carnal and sinful as everybody else. No, he's talking about a real, he's talking about a, a supernatural work of the blood of Christ Jesus that makes you practically righteous, that gives you a new heart, a new spirit, a new mind, a new will, a new way, a new everything. Amen. Now look what he says here. What are these people doing in the midst of that perverse and wicked generation? They are holding out to it. They are offering to all men the word of life. Ah. You see, holiness is not just about being dead to sin. It's about being alive to God. Amen. Holiness means that you're on fire. You're not lukewarm. You're not cold. You are on fire for God. You hold out the word of life to men. Ever. You are a witness. You are a martyr for Jesus Christ. You, you count it all joy to bear the marks of Jesus Christ on your back as you are persecuted, rejected, betrayed by those you're trying to bring the life of Christ to. That you're not concerned about the persecution, being whipped, being stoned, being thrown in prison. You're not worried about those things. Why? Because you are an uncontaminated child of God that has been brought forth to hold out the word of life, to enlighten all men everywhere, to hold out the gospel of truth that souls may be saved. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. See, if we don't make disciples, if we do, if we are not busy getting souls in the kingdom of God, we're not holy. Huh? I got on, sir. I got on. Come on, bro. Because you're holding, you're separated to the will of the of God. To be holy is to have the love of Christ that constrains you to no longer live for yourself, but to live for the one who died for him. For you. My Lord. You see, we, we, we think we're holy, we think, we think we're right, but if we're not obeying the commands of Jesus Christ, then we're not. Uh, and his biggest command was go and make disciples of all nations. Yes. 
And over 90% of the Church of America has never spoken to anybody about Jesus Christ in their entire Christian life and think they're on the way to in the way to heaven. When Jesus says, if you don't bear any fruit, you, you claim you abide in me, you bear no fruit, he says, you will be cut off and wither. And guess what? You'll be cast into the fire to burn. Let me tell you, there ain't no fire in heaven. Come on, sir. Come the on, only sir. light in heaven is God and the Son, Jesus Christ. There's no fire burning in heaven for, for withered branches that are not bearing the fruits of his kingdom. Because Jesus said, if you abide in me, not only will you bear fruit, but you will bear much fruit. Yes. You see, that's the whole purpose of marriage. God created man and woman. He made them a man and a woman for the purpose of marriage. Why? That they might multiply. That they might multiply and fill the earth with godly people. Yes. Well, what do you think Christianity is all about? It's about being married to Jesus. And if you're married to Jesus, you will procreate. You will multiply and fill the earth with godly saints of Jesus. Hallelujah. We got a barren church. My God. And it ain't Jesus' fault. Because his seed is barren fruit. Yeah. If you're married to Jesus and you're not bearing fruit, you are not going to stay in the household of God. My God. Because that's your purpose of redemption. You are separated to be holy, separated to the will and purpose of God to do what? To serve Him. Yes. To bring in a harvest, to bring in a people, and prepare a bride, to gather a people unto Him for the coming of Jesus Christ. So to say that we're saved when we sit in church week after week and never do what God has commanded us to do, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not the things I say do, is an affront to Jesus Christ. My God. It is just as sinful not to do the commands of God as it is to, to, to walk in these gross sins we talk about. My Lord. It's still sin. It's still. And it's still, it is a lack, it is a sign that the love of Christ is not in your heart. Uh, mm, but when God. the love of Christ is in your heart and you have the Holy Ghost, you're going to be doing what the Holy Ghost does. He came to seek and save that was his law. He came to carry on the work of Jesus Christ. He uh, came to fulfill the mandate of God to make disciples of every nation upon the face of the earth. He came to send us out in the fields of harvest and bring in the souls of men. My God. So to say you got the Holy Ghost and you never do anything for the kingdom of God is a lie. And that's what Paul was talking about in Corinthians. He says there's another Jesus, there's another spirit, and there's another gospel. My God. And it's all built around flesh and carnality and worship of the creature rather than creator. My God. God says his people are sold out to do his will. They lay down their life. They deny themselves. They lay down the comfort and the entertainment and the pleasure to do the will of God. They are sold out. They are witnesses. A witness is a martyr. The word in Acts chapter, chapter 2 is a martyr. Uh, you shall be my witness. It's a martyr to lay down your life for Jesus Christ. To take up the cross daily and follow him. To do his will. When he redeems you, he fills you with that kind of love. With that passion and zeal to want to please him and serve him and do his will. No matter what it costs. Amen. Because the pearl of great price is more precious than anything. This yes. Has to ah, See, we need a revelation of the infinite value, the infinite worthiness of yeah. Jesus Christ because that's what keeps us from, from selling all and doing what it calls to do. My Lord. We give more time and energy to things of this world than we give to Jesus. We give more time and energy to, to all the, the garbage on TV than we give to the Bible. We give more time and energy to, 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 to sports and, 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 and all this other nonsense on our computers and games and everything than we give to the kingdom of God. Amen. And yet we claim he's our first one. Oh, my God. Come on. Without holiness, no one shall see God. Now look what Paul said. He says, you are to hold out, offer all men the word of life. Why? So that in the day of Christ, I may have something of which exultantly to rejoice and glory in that I did not run my race in vain or spend my labor to no purpose. When Jesus commanded us, go and make disciples of every nation, he was saying that every single person is supposed to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. And a disciple makes disciples. Uh -huh. What Paul was saying was, if, 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 if God sent me to you and I and I labored in your field and I brought you to the King of Kings, I, I, I brought you the words of life and you received the redemption of Jesus Christ. If you are not holding out the word of life to make disciples of others, he said, I have failed in my job. I have failed in my place. I have labored in vain. If I have not made a disciple that makes a disciple, I have not done the will of Jesus Christ. My Lord. He said, 
because I, I'm just wasting my time. When I have to stand before Jesus and say, Lord, look at all these souls I have. And Jesus looks at them and he sees all these barren, worldly, self-conceited, self-serving people thinking, and that's what you can offer unto me. Oh, my God. <laughs> See, in Corinthians, Paul put it this way. It says, the, 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 the fruit that I give to God, the sacrifice that I give to God in this priestly service, Okay? We're all priests. We're supposed to be doing priestly service unto God. Paul said, my priestly service is to present to God a sacrifice of Gentiles that have been made holy by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Yes. Because that's the only, he says, that's the acceptable and pleasing sacrifice to God. Nothing less will do. Mm. See, we got all these mega churches in America. We got, we got churches filled with tens of thousands of people all across America. And these pastors thinking that, that the day is going to come when God is just going to pour accolades and crowns upon them because they're going to come with this basket full of, of thousands of people. Carnal, worldly, barren, dead in sin, selfish people that we think he's going to be pleased to receive. Jesus. The only acceptable and pleasing fruit unto God are the fruits of righteousness that come through Jesus Christ. They are the fruits of holiness that have been sanctified by the Spirit of God, by the blood of Jesus, that are now doing the will of God. Amen. If you don't have grandchildren, you're not a disciple yet. you got to make disciples of somebody that makes disciples. Yeah. Now you're on your way. That's called holiness. Right. That's called being blameless and uncontaminated in the midst of this evil world. Philippians 1.10, that you may surely learn to sense what is vital and approve and prize what is excellent and of real value. And that you may be untainted and pure and unerring and blameless in the day of Christ. Not stumbling nor causing others to stumble. Again, what's he saying? The purpose of Christ, the purpose of the cross, the purpose of, of Christ's sacrifice was to make us holy, to make us pure, blameless in the sight of God. And look what he says in the Empire, it says, not stumbling nor causing others to stumble. Not only do you not stumble, you don't cause others to stumble. You're not a stumbling stone to others by your life of sin and self and, and carnality. Flesh. You are not leading others in the wrong way. Like Paul says, follow me as I follow Christ. If you're not following Christ, you are a stumbling stone uh, my Lord. to other people in the body of Christ. Mm. If you're living in sin, you are a stumbling stone to other people in the body of Christ. He says we're to be holy. That means you don't cause others to stumble. You remain steadfast and faithful. You walk in righteousness. You walk in obedience. 1 Thessalonians 3.13 So that he may strengthen and confirm and establish your heart faultlessly pure and unblameable in holiness in the sight of our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all his saints. Amen. So be it. Again, what's he saying? God has done a work that our hearts would be pure and unblameable in holiness. That's the very definition of holiness. A pure heart. Clean hands and a pure heart. Without holiness, no one shall see the Lord. Blessed is he that has a pure heart, for he shall see the Lord. Who shall stand in the hill of the Lord? Who shall, who, who shall go up in the hill of the Lord? Who shall stand in his holy place? He has clean hands and a pure heart. If your heart's not pure from flesh and sin and, and that stoniness and enmity and, 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 and carnality and worldliness, then you're not holy. He came to make us holy so that on the day of Christ we would present to, He would present us to Him already holy. That, 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 that uh, uh, at the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, with His saints, they will see a holy people. They will see a, a holy people upon this earth. Unbelievable in the sight of God and the Father. Hmm. He's looking at us. Yes. See, so all you have to do is go back to Luke chapter 1. Go back to the beginning. Go back when, when, when Luke chapter 1, before, the, before Jesus was born, and Zechariah began to prophesy the birth of John the Baptist. And he tells them that what was happening. He explained to them what was happening. He told them this is the fulfillment of the promise to Abraham. That God was going to send a deliverer to set you free from your enemy. And then he says, here's why. That you might serve him in holiness. In his presence. In his sight. All the days of your life. That's why he came to save us. Yes. To serve him in holiness, holiness. Before him, in his sight. What? He's watching us. His eyes are upon us mm. as we're doing his will. Amen. See, that's the good thing. Because if you're walking right with God, his eyes with me. Mm. 
He, 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 he's with me to make sure that the job gets done. Mm -hmm. See, that's what he said. He thought about back in, back in Chronicles. He thought about the fact that, 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 that God would be with us, that he would not leave us or forsake us until we have finished all the service for the work of the house of God. Mm. That's why when I say, God, what are you going to do? Where, where am I supposed to go? He says, go here, go there. Wherever they are perishing souls, go. Why? Because I'm with you. Yes. yes. It doesn't matter where you are. It's what you're doing. God is with you. And lo and behold, He is with you. When? When you're making disciples. When you're doing the will of God. When you're walking in holy grace. The Lord is with you. Yes. And His eye is upon you. So everything that comes along, every distraction, everything that tries to get in the way, God's eye is upon you. He's watching. He's dictating. He's ordering. He's structuring. His spirit is moving to get you the place that He's prepared. Amen. Mm -hmm. See? See, God's here right now. His eye is upon this house. He's not worried there's not 2,000 people in this place. He's looking for one man. He's looking for one woman. He's just looking for one man. Because we have yet to see what God can do with one person that's completely sold out to the will of Jesus Christ in absolute, uh, uh, absolute devotion unto him. 1 Thessalonians 5, 23. And may the God of peace himself sanctify you through and through. Look at this. He says he wants to separate you from profane things. He wants to make you pure and holy, consecrated to God. And may your spirit and soul and body be preserved sound and complete and found blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. When's he going to do it? Right now. Now. Being dead to sin and alive to God. Not tomorrow. Not when Jesus comes. No, now. Why? So when he comes, you will be found holy and blameless. And, and listen, body, soul, and spirit. He does the whole work. He's a holistic God. He touches every part of you. He cleanses your body, soul, and your spirit. He does the whole work. The blood of Jesus purifies us from all sin. Yes. He takes all the defilement from your body, all the defilement from your soul, from your mind, from your from your emotions. He takes all that sin out of you. He cleanses up. He cleans up your spirit and he cleanses your heart and makes it pure and holy by the yes. blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. So that when he comes, you'll be found blameless, body, soul, and spirit. And notice what he said. And this is what you are when you're holy. You are consecrated to God. In other words, your life is given over to the purpose and will of God. Yes. That's yes. what consecrates you. Uh. You are about God. Everything about you is about God. Just like Jesus. He never did anything for himself. Everything was about God. Serving God. Pleasing God. Doing God's will. Whatever God wants. Whatever. That's me. See, consecrated to God. I'm here for the purpose of God. Yes. It is not about cars and houses and, and, and money and buildings. No, it's about Jesus. It's about God. It's about people. It's about soul. It's about the kingdom of God. We are here to be about the business of the king. Amen. He bought and paid for us. Body, soul, and spirit. Yes. We've taken those, those, those talents and burned them in the, in, in, in the napkin. And then thank God be so pleased. Mm. And we didn't have enough gumption to go at least put it in the bank and get some interest on it. My God. 2 Peter 3.14 So beloved, since you are expecting these things, be eager to be found by him that is coming without spot or blemish and at peace. Again, what's he saying? You better be holy when he comes. Mm. And because you know what's coming, you know it. Peter's talking about it, and he's trying to, he, he, he explained to them, look, the Lord's coming, he's going to change this earth. I mean, the heaven and earth are going to pass away, he's going to bring it forth anew. He's going to come with a fire upon this earth. He said, but if you know these things, you better do something. You better be eager. You better be going after. You better get a hold. You better pursue this. You better get this thing holy right. You better get a hold of this holy. Because when he comes, if you ain't holy, uh, you will not see God. My Lord. See, Adam and Eve walked in the garden of, of Eden and saw God. They, they, they walked and talked with God. They had the presence of God. But as soon as they were no longer holy, when they sinned and transgressed and their nature was no longer holy and righteous, God left. They could not see God anymore. My God. When Israel was, was, was in the wilderness in the tabernacle and God came down up on Mount Sinai, God came down and dwelt right in the midst of it. They saw the physical manifestation of God. They saw the fire, the cloud, the thunder, the lightning. They saw the Shekinah glory of God, a cloud by day, a fire by night. But when they sinned, when they were no longer holy, God left and they could not see God anymore. My God. God came into the temple of Solomon after they offered thousands of offerings and 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 and, and, and the holy the God came down into the into that temple and filled it with his glory. The priest could not even minister. 
and Israel sinned against God and were no longer holy. God forsook that temple and left and yes, never looked back. Yes, he did. They could not see God anymore. When Jesus died on the cross and the curtain, the veil was ripped in two. They couldn't see God because he had already left. Because they were no longer holy. My God. They couldn't even hear the voice of God for 400 years because they weren't holy. And then to think of a church that is carnal and worldly and self-seeking. Thinking we have a holy God. We have a Holy Spirit. And we're unclean and unholy and, and worldly and filthy. We are deceived. You cannot see God except you be holy. He says, you better be eager to be found by Him that is coming without spot or blemish and at peace with God. The Lord's coming, people. We better get eager. We better get, get moving. We need to get up off our butts and get moving and get holy. Get a hold of God. Get a hold of that blood. Begin to seek Him in repentance and brokenness of heart until He come and reign His righteous upon us. Hallelujah. Until He break yes. up that fallow yes. ground of yes. sin and flesh and, and stoniness and yes, get Lord. that stuff out until He yes. come and do His holy work by the blood of us. Yes. We had better get on our faces. We yes. better make that our priority. Yes. 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 Lord. Yes. Like we heard earlier, he's coming at a time when nobody thinks. My God, yes. He's coming like a thief in the night. Not to the world, to the church. Yes. Come on, sir. My God. Come on, sir. It's, it's the virgins that weren't ready, that were looking for his coming, that weren't ready, and though they missed out. Uh -huh. It was his servants that weren't ready that missed out. It was his unfaithful householders that weren't ready and missed out uh -huh. at the coming of Jesus. Yes. Not the world. They did not even look for Jesus. Oh, my God. Jude 124. Now to him who is able to keep you without stumbling or slipping or falling, and to present you unblemished before the presence of his glory in triumphant joy and exaltation. When he makes you holy, he can keep you holy. Amen. You eat of his flesh and drink of his blood every day. Yeah. You, you, you keep yourself cleansed from every defilement of body, soul, and spirit every day. In the blood of the Lamb. Yes. Like the priests going into the holy place. They got to wash their feet every day. They're already clean already. But they got to wash their feet before they go into the holy place. Yeah. God can keep you from stumbling. God can keep you holy. Okay. That, 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 that verse in 1 John chapter 1. Where he says. And the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. If you read in the Greek. It actually says. Keeps us cleansed from all sin. In other words, as we walk in the light, as we walk with Jesus, we walk in the in the Holy Ghost, He keeps us cleansed from all sin. He reveals sin before it has a time to attach itself to us. He convicts us of something that God has, has put His hand, His finger upon, and identified, and we get rid of that thing right away. Why? Because our, 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 our conscience is tender, our heart is tender towards God. He keeps us cleansed. He don't allow anything to attach itself to us. Mm -hmm. Amen. And because the fear of God was given to us through that redemptive work of Christ, we hate evil. Mm. We don't have anything to do with it. We don't want to look on it. We, we, we don't want to sit down in our comfortable chair and watch it and enjoy it. We, we don't want to put, our, put, put, put it for our eyes. We don't want to put our hand in it. We don't want to participate in it. We want to open our mouth in it. No, we don't have nothing to do with it. We hate evil, just like God hates. In fact, it's so hateful that everything that gets upon us, any defilement of sin, gets upon, we feel dirty. We just feel like, God, you need to do something now because I just feel dirty. I can't stand. I don't know about you, but I have a thing about yes, germs. Yes. I can't stand some things that get dirty. You know, I got to go my hands right away. Yeah. See, God, when He makes us holy, he, when He changes our heart, gets a hold of, when you get something on you, when you hear something come through your, eye, your ear gate, you see something come through your eye gate, you can't, you got, oh God, God forgive me, Lord, right now, in the name yes, of Jesus, yes, yes, Father, Lord. wash me in that blood, get yes. that thing off of me, get that my thing God, away from me, God. make me clean again, Lord, give me a clean hands, pure heart, Lord, I cannot be this way. My God, yes. We hate sin. Mm -hmm. mm. See, the church today, they, they, they enjoy sin. They entertain themselves with sin. Every time they turn on the TV, they just sit back and enjoy the homosexuality, the adultery and fornication, the lying, the murder, the thieving, the, the robber, the, the, the... Oh, God, help us. My God. 
Enjoy it. My Lord. I just want enjoy it. Come Ooh. on, sir. Come on, sir. Come on. My Lord. I think they're going to hell. Come on, preach, preacher. Come on, preacher. That's the word. Ah. God told Isaiah, you mean you think you're going to go and live like this in all your sin and I'm God, then you're going to come into my house and go through this ritual and think everything okay and then go right back out and do the same thing again and you think I'm pleased with it? But that's what the church does. We, we come to church and we, you know, oh, we, we repent, you know, we, we, and go right back and do the same thing and because we went through the ritual, because we said a prayer, we think everything's straight now. And God looks at our unholiness. He looks at the uncleanness of our hearts. He, he looks at the filth. And we think we're going to heaven. Without holiness, nobody, no one shall see the Lord. And it was to that end that he exhorts us in Hebrews, pursue holiness. Pursue holiness without which no one shall see the Lord. If you don't have it, you better get it. Because time's running out. He said, be eager. Be eager. Be diligent. Do something. Get on your face. Act like this. If you don't do this, you got nothing. It ought to be the top priority. It ought to be the thing that drives you. Because you know that Jesus may just show up next hour, next day, next night, tomorrow. We don't know. He's going to come. And if we're still trying to decide, we're still trying to decide what's more important. What are we going to do with our time? What are we going to do? You know, if we're still deciding, uh, he closed the door. Uh, we knock it. Jesus, <laughs> peek around. Make it plain, sir. I don't know you. Make it plain. I don't know you. I got. I don't know you. So what is this holiness that he's talking about? We better know what it is. Ephesians 5, 27 again. That he might present the church to himself in glorious splendor without a spot or wrinkle or any such thing that she might be holy and fallen. To be holy is to be free of sin. Without spot or blemish. The word perfect means the same thing. See again, that's one of the lies of the devil. Oh, nobody's perfect. Well, I just tell him that I'm, not, I'm nobody then. <laughs> I'm nobody. Why? Because I'm perfect. Because yeah. Jesus made me perfect. Amen. The word perfect and the word holy are the same word. Mm -hmm. It means the same thing. It comes from the Hebrew uh, Tamim back in the Old Testament. When, 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 when God said to, 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 to uh, Abraham, now be perfect. He told Israel, be perfect. Okay? He, he, he commanded them, be perfect. He told, he told uh, 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 Jonah, be perfect. What does he mean? Well, it's the same word he used for the sacrifice. A sacrifice was perfect when it was without spot or blemish. The word perfect means to be without spot or blemish. Okay? So Jesus came to do what? He died on the cross to make us perfect or holy. Amen. He came to make us without spot or blemish. How? By washing away, by removing, by deliverance from all sin, every spot, every blemish. Then we'd be perfect and holy. Amen. Okay? So to be holy is to be without spot or blemish, to be without wrinkle. Okay? He's, he's, he's describing this bride in, 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 in these robes that are washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. He's describing a, a, a dress that is that is white. Yes. That's been cleansed with fuller soap. That's been that's the white as wool. That, 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 you, you go back in the song. They understood these things. They even understood these things. They understood. It. Wash me in his up, make me as white as snow. That's the broad. She's white. There's no spots. There's no wrinkles. There's no flesh. There's no soil. She's white, washed in the blood of Jesus. It's hard to understand how blood can make you white, but that's what it does. Ah. First Thessalonians uh, chapter three, verse thirteen, or, or rather uh, Psalm, Psalm twenty-four again. Uh, who shall go up in the hill of God? The hill of water. Who stands holy place? He has clean hands and pure hearts. That's holy. Clean hands and pure hearts. That's holy. Okay. First. Uh, Thessalonians 3.13 So that he may strengthen and confirm and establish your hearts faultlessly pure and unblameable in holiness. Again, what's he saying? Holy, to be holy is to have an unblameable, faultless and pure heart. 
There's no sin in it, there's no flesh in it, there's no carnality in it, there's no self, no pride, no, no greed, no, no jealousy, no anger. It's pure. It's been washed, it's been cleansed, it's, it's every spot and blemish has been taken out. You see, if you really go back and look and study the, the tabernacle and how they built it and whatever the ritual they had to go through for every little, little tiny thing, every single thing had to be purified and washed and cleansed, go through the fire, be anointed, be, be, cut, be touched with blood. I mean, just all the stuff they had to do before God could even think about coming and dwelling in that place. That's what he came to do in your heart. Only he made it easier because he provided a blood of all bloods. You see, the power of blood is in its, the value of the power of the blood is in its source. The blood and bulls and goats, only goats only have so much power because they come from animals. They could cover sin. They, they, they could cover it over so God could look and not see that sin. But that's all it can do. It couldn't take your sin away. But see, the value of Christ's blood is that it is the very blood of God. So that's what we don't get. It's the very blood of God. How much power is in the blood of God? See, all these people in the church today, preachers, ministers, bishops, all this stuff, nonsense, don't believe in the power of the blood because they don't understand. That's the blood of God Himself. The value of that blood is in the fact that it's God's own blood. Shed for our sin. It can erase, it can wipe away, it can remove any spot open. It's better than oxy, whatever that stuff is you put on the floor. No, it takes every spot, every blemish, it removes every stain, every wrinkle. That blood is so powerful. It is so quick and powerful. It is so great, so powerful. I don't care what you've done. That blood just takes that thing right out of you. My God. He just wash you clean. The Holy Ghost take that hiss of dip it in the blood of Jesus Christ and apply it on your heart and your heart with the white as snow. Mm. Hallelujah. My Lord. Thank you, Lord. And you know that you know that you know it's been done. Because that's when you know you've been born again. That's when you know you have a brand new heart. You've been regenerated, sanctified, redeemed, justified. You have been made a new creation in Christ. Why? Because you got a new heart, a new spirit, a new mind. You are no longer Adam. You are now in Christ. Amen. You are a new creation in Christ Jesus. Everything is new. All the old has passed away. First Thessalonians 5.23 And may the God of peace himself sanctify you through and through. Separate you from profane things and make you pure and holy consecrated to God. To be holy means to be consecrated to God. Again, everything about your life is about God. And that's exactly what we see in the New Testament. Those people were given over body, soul, and spirit even to the death, even to the persecution, torture, and suffering were given over to the will of God. They didn't care about themselves. They walked like Jesus walked. They fulfill the requirements of God to fear Him, to walk in all His ways, to love Him, to serve Him with all the heart, soul, and being, and to obey every commandment. They fulfilled that to a T. Because when they were redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ, they denied themselves. They laid down their life and they took His life. They put off that old man and they put on the new man. They put on the Lord Jesus Christ. They, were, they, they partook of His divine nature. They had a new nature inside of them. It was the nature of God. See, your nature determines what you do. If you're still living in the world, still living in flesh, still a, still, still a lover of the world, lover of pleasures, and, and the deceitfulness of riches, and, and caught up with the affairs of this life, it's because your nature is still the old nature. Mm, my Lord. And that's not of God. The lust of the flesh, the, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life is not of God. It's of the world. It's of the world that lies in the wind. It's of, it's of Satan. You're of your father, Satan. You take your nature after him. Mm. But he who is born of God does not continue to sin. Why? Because he has a new nature. He has the nature of Christ. He has the nature of the Holy Ghost. He has a new nature that does nothing but want to please and serve and obey and fear and, and do whatever God wants them to do. To live and die for Jesus. That's what the new nature does. Why? Because it's full of God. It is God. It's His, it's his nature. See, a good tree cannot bear bad fruit and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. Amen. And they won't do the opposite either. Why? So when you've given, a, you've given a, a, a good nature, a new nature, a good nature, what? You're not going to sin. You're going to be rebellious and idolatrous and disobedient and unfaithful. 
You're on fire. There's no lukewarm thing in, in holiness. There is no such thing as being holy and lukewarm. Come on now. Because to be holy, like you said right here, is to be consecrated to God. Your will, your, your thoughts, your ways, your mind, your desires, everything about you is about God. Amen. You live and walk like Jesus. What? Not living for yourself, but living for one die for you. You live for God. You serve Him. You, you just want to please. You just want to do whatever it takes. You're willing to lay down your life and die. That's what it means. Mm. That's called being hot. Mm -hmm. Not cold, not lukewarm. That's, that's being hot. That's what Jesus called us to. Consecrated to God. Every facet of our being is given over to God. To be in His Word, to be in prayer, to be in devotion, to be in to to to, to, to be in, in, in disciple making, to be in the in the kingdom of God, be in the things of God, about the things of God, and loving one another, serving one another, but teaching one another, exhorting one another. All the things we're supposed to be doing as the body of Christ. Why? Because He gave me everything I needed to do. That's why it's called grace. It's not of me, it's of Him. He gives me the fear. He gives me the love. He gives me the passion, the zeal. He gives me the obedience. He gives me the spirit. He gives me every single thing I need to fully fulfill the requirements of the law because he puts it all in me. He imparts it by grace, by faith in me. Amen. It's not what I do. It's what he did. Amen. Yes. He roots out, takes out all the old, and then puts in me all the new so that I can be, just like you see in the New Testament, I can be an on fire after God. Got to do the will. Got to please yes, Him. Got to yes. serve Him. Got to know Him. Yes. Got to seek Him. Got to be about yeah. Him. Yes. All is yes. given unto me. In and of ourselves, we won't do none of that. Why? Because in and of ourselves, we are enemy with God. We hate God. We have nothing to do with God. We walk away from God. We, 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 we sin against God. We, we look after ourselves. We do everything except. But when God changes your heart, God gives you a new heart, a new spirit, a new mind, a new will, a new thought, a new desire, a new purpose. Everything is new. And now you walk as a new creation. Hallelujah. Yes. That's the place of power. That's the place of, of the presence of power of God being done. That's the place of manifestation upon this. That's the place of glory. That's the place that God wants to bring his church to. To manifest that all flesh can see the glory of God upon this earth. Amen. But he ain't going to give it to people that are worldly and carnal and, and, and they're going to take those things and use it on their flesh. Mm -hmm. He's looking for holy people uh, that are consecrated for his will and purpose. <laughs> Romans 6.22 But now, since you have been set free from sin and have become the slaves of God, you have your present reward in holiness and his end is eternal life. You need to listen carefully to what he's saying. Paul is explaining to us what it means to be holy, to be redeemed by the blood of Jesus, to be saved. He's, he's, he's explaining to us what it means to truly be regenerated and justified and brought into reconciliation with God. He says, but now, not tomorrow, not next week, not when Jesus comes, not when he comes, right now, when you believe, it is as quick as a revelation. When you believe, it's done. Yes. Mm. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Now, Hallelujah. you have been set free from sin. When? When your old man was nailed to the cross with Jesus Christ 2,000 years ago. Oh and when you reckon yourself to death, when you believe it and reckon yourself to death, it is finished. Yes. Whom the Son sets free is free indeed. You yes. are set free now and forever. Sin no longer has power over you. When? Now. But he didn't stop there. He says, now you've been set free from sin and have become the slaves of God. It's a two-edged sword. He cuts off one and he puts in another. That's what I'm saying. If you're holy, it's not just about, oh, I don't commit adultery. Oh, I don't steal. Oh, I don't kill anybody. No, it's not. That's, not, that's only half the picture. That's only half the sword. you got to have the other half. you got to receive the impartation. you got to receive the spirit of the living God, bringing the love of Christ, bringing the gifts of God, bringing the passion, the zeal, bringing the, the obedience, bringing the law into your heart, bringing all these things that God wants you to have so that you're not a slave of God. You live for God. You serve God. He says, jump. I say, yes, sir. How high do you want me to jump? My God. He says, go to Africa. When? When do you want me to leave? Lord, I got my bags packed. He's going to go down in Gilpin Court, 12 o'clock tonight, meet them drug dealers. I'm going to save some people. Yes, sir, I'm on my way. My you God. mind if I take a flashlight? My <laughs> God. <laughs> I'm a slave of God. Yes. I don't know any slaves that decide what and when and how and oh, where and what they Yes, do. yes. I don't know that kind of person. My God. If we're the slaves of God, how can we do our own thing? My Lord. He owns us. Yes. Your body, soul, and spirit belong. He bought and paid for it. You belong to Him. To do as He pleases you to do. That means being holy. Okay, look what He says now. So He says, 
Now you're free from sin. You're, you're dead to sin. You're free from the power of sin. You, you don't have sin and, and defilement and, and all this. He said, and also now you become the, the servants of God, the slaves of God. You are consecrated. You are alive unto God. You're dead to sin, but you're alive. Oh, if you get a revelation, what it means to be alive to God? Every facet of your being is just, it's just <laughs> yes. heading in that direction. I know it's up. Your ears, your eyes, your, your mind, your, your hands, your feet. You can't help but pray. You can't help but. You know, nobody got to hype you up. Nobody got to work you up. Nobody got You're alive to God. Everything in you is alive to God. The Spirit of God is in you. The seed of God. The nature of God is in you. Nobody got to work you up to do nothing. You're alive under God. Hallelujah. Yes. You need to work me up. I'm a catalyst of God. My God. I come to start fires. I come to start. Oh God. Thank you, Lord. Oh, yes. I talk God, I speak God, I dream God. I'm, it's, it's about Him, it's about Him, it's about Him. I'm alive under God. Speak for me, Speak, 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 speak. That's being holy. Yes, Lord. See? Dead to sin, but alive to God. Oh God. Now look what He says. Look what He says in Romans chapter 6, verse 22. Now that you're dead to sin, now that you're the same of God, you have your present reward in holiness. When are you holy? When you're dead to sin. <laughs> and alive to God. When you're dead to sin and the servant of God, you have your reward. Your reward is you're not holy. God has done His work. He has cleansed you. He has given you clean hands and a pure heart. He has rooted out, ripped up, tore down, and destroyed all that flesh and corruption. And He has given you His spirit, His love, His passion. He's given everything of His kingdom for you. Now you're holy. Yes. But look at it. It's not there. And it's in. Is what? Everlasting. Everlasting life. The end of what is everlasting life? Mm. Being holy. Without holiness. No one. No. Just God. It is not the end of saying a prayer. It is not the end of saying one thing and, 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 and being something else. It's not the end of having a form but denying the power. It is not the end of something that's not real. It is the end of being holy. It is the end of being dead to sin, being finished with sin, being finished with this world, being finished with flesh, and being alive under God. That's eternal life. Why is that true? Why did God say it was that way? Because we take the next verse and we take it out of context and we misuse it. He says, here's the reason why that's true. Here's the reason why without holiness no one should see God. Because the wages of sin is death. He's talking about spiritual death. He likens it to eternal life. Without holiness you cannot see God. Why? Because the wages of your sin is eternal life. Damnation. Mm. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. But eternal life is the fruit of your present reward of holiness after you have been made dead to sin and alive unto God. You are consecrated to God. You are without spot, without blemish. Your heart is pure. Your hands are clean. And everything about you is a newness of life directed unto the resurrection life of Jesus Christ. To walk, to live, to please, to serve, to do whatever my Lord and God wants. Amen. He is my Lord. Yes. He is my King. Not yes. in word, but in deed. Yes, Lord. I don't say, Lord, Lord, do not the things he says to me. When he speaks, I say, yes, sir. Because he's Lord. That's the church that God's going to raise up. That's the bride that he's going to have for his son. He is not coming back for a lukewarm, worldly, carnal people. He is coming back for an on fire, righteous, holy, consecrated, dedicated, full of God, full of the Spirit. Now, I'm not here to condemn you. 
I'm here to give you good news. If you're not there, repent and believe. And Jesus will make it whole. Repent and believe. You'll receive a remission of sinners. You'll be filled with the Holy Ghost. Just look it up. Look what it says when you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Look at what happens when you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. You'll be reconciled. You'll be justified. You'll be redeemed, regenerated. You'll be sanctified. You, everything that Jesus came to do when you repent and believe is done. Because He came to do that. He came to fulfill what God requires of us. To fear Him. To walk in His ways. To love Him. To serve Him with all our heart, soul, and being. And to obey all His commands. Jesus came to supernaturally affect every one of those things in us. He prophetically revealed it all through the Old Testament. His blood came to sanctify your heart so He could fill you. Fill you with His love. His blood came to take out the idolatry and selfishness so He could fill you with His love. His blood came to, to wash away your disobedience on faithfulness. Then He can come by His blood and make you faithful and steadfast and, and loving and, 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 and betrothed unto Him in steadfastness and faithfulness for the rest of your days. We just got to read the Bible, why He came, why He died. He died to make you holy. So that we can walk like Jesus and do the same works and even greater works. Don't we ask anything in his name. He, he's he's going to do it. Why? Because our mind, our heart is God's. It's his desire. It's not mine. It's his desire. So when he puts a desire in my heart, it's going to happen. Why? Because it came from him. In the beginning, the word, the word was God. It began with God. We get in trouble when it begins with us. That's why that carnality of flesh gets in there and messes everything up. If it begins with you, it's not of God. Because in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. If God didn't send the word, then forget it. But whatever he says, he's going to do it. He stands behind His will to do it. See, God's going to bring forth a people in the power of the Holy Ghost that's going to manifest His glory upon this earth. And I'm telling you what, there is a power and authority being released upon the body of Christ. There is a boldness that God is releasing. If you go back to, 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 to uh, 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 Job uh, 22, I believe it is, He tells us that when we uh, uh, get righteous, when we pursue righteousness like gold or silver, when we make God of our, our first priority. He says, then you will have your delight in the Lord. See, we say, oh, delight yourself in the Lord and give us out of his heart. You know what that means. It means that you made God your first, your first uh, uh, love. You made God everything. You have pursued. You are not living in sin or suffering. You have given yourself to God wholly and completely. But then he said this. He says, you will decree a thing that shall come to pass. Amen. Yes. He says, you will intercede for those who are not innocent and God will grant your request based yes. on your cleanness of your hands. My God. Yes. yes, yes. See, some of you got on love, uh, 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 unsaved loved ones and, 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 and just praying that God will save them. Listen, listen. Get your hands clean and God will use you. God will yes. move on behalf of you to get that, that, that one that's not innocent, that sinner. He'll get them straight uh, yes. when we give ourselves to Him first. My God. When we fulfill our own obedience, God will take care of that disobedience. That's right. That's right. You see, that's the problem. See, we, we, we try and we pray, but here we are in disobedience. Here we are in disarray. Here we are all on holy day. God hearing our prayers. Come on. Come on. He said, get yourself clean. Get yourself holy. Why? Then I can move. Yes. I can operate based on the cleanness of your hands. Yes. I can yes. move through your prayer. The prayers yes. of a righteous man are powerful and effective. Yes. See, the scepter of God's kingdom that he sent forth from Zion, the, the, the strength of God that comes from Zion, the scepter of his hey. kingdom is righteousness. Yes. When you're righteous and holy, you have power with God. Yes. Hallelujah. How do you think oh. Jesus did what he did? Yes. He went around doing good and healed all the power of that one. Because God was with him. Why? Because he was with God. He was righteous and therefore God gave him the spirit without measure. Yes. He had all power and authority. Hallelujah. Yes. God wants to raise up a people in this hour. Yes. The sons and daughters of God. The sons of Zedah. The sons of righteous. Why? Yes. So when we speak, when we decree, when we declare, it happens just like that. When we when we when we speak the word of God, with the word that set free, with the finger of God they are delivered and set free in the name of Jesus. Why? Because the prayer of righteous God. When we say rain stop, it stops. We say sun and moon, it skips, it stops right away. Why? Because the prayer of a righteous man. Yes, Lord. Because we're one with God. Yes, Lord. It's not what I want. It's not what you 
in my heart. It's not to, for my glory and my fame. No, it's because God said, uh, Get up on the mountains, get rid of rain. Yes, have the rain in three years. Get yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. <laughs> I see you. <laughs> oh, Servant didn't believe it. Come back. Ain't no rain. Ain't no, ain't no cloud in the sky. Ain't no. You better get back there. Look again. God said. God said. God said. The yeah. prayer of a righteous yeah. man yeah. is power and yeah. Go back again yeah. and again and again. Yeah. Hey. I see a cloud like the fist of a man. Yeah. He says, You better get down off this mountain because yeah. there's a flood coming. Yeah. There's a flood coming. There's a rain coming. There's a storm coming. Get down off the mountain. Yeah. The rain. See, we don't get it. The same Holy Ghost and power is in Christ Jesus is in me because I believe. I don't know about you, but it's in me because I believe. I believe, therefore I speak. I don't judge by what I see or what I hear. I judge with righteous judgment. I'm not moved by need. I'm not moved by the things of circumstances and the things of support. I am moved by the Spirit of the living God. Amen. When He speaks, it is done. When He commands, it is established. There's nothing more to say. It's finished. That's the people God's going to bring for. He is going to restore miracle signs and wonders and wonders that no other generation has ever seen at all. He is going to have a people yes, Lord. that manifest His presence, that prove the resurrection of Jesus Christ, yeah. that He rose from the dead. He is alive and well today and yeah. inside of me. Yeah. And just so you know for sure, watch this. Uh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Be uh, Jesus. Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes. My God. Thank you, Lord. How will you know Jesus, Jesus is here? When the blind eyes are open. The deaf hear, the lepers are cleansed, yeah. the lame walk, the dead are raised, and the poor have the good news preached unto them. If he's still here today, he's still doing the same things today. And if he's not doing them things, he ain't here. Because my God hasn't changed. He's just looking for a man. He's looking for a woman who has a heart after him. Who is totally sold out. The eyes of the Lord raised throughout the earth. The, the strength of those whose hearts are fully committed to him. Who's committed to God? Who is sold out to God? Who's on fire for God? Who don't care a whit about this life or anything in it. But just wants God and everything he has. Everything he is. Just want him. That's what I tell God. I, as long as somebody ain't healed, I need more God. Yes, yes. Because he said Jesus healed all who are in the power of the devil. Every one of them was healed under the power of the devil. But then he told me, I give you power and authority to trample on snakes and scorpions over all the power of the enemy. So if he's given me power to trample on snakes and scorpions to overcome the power of the enemy, then all ought to be healed. It ain't happening, I go with another level. I gotta, I gotta step up. I gotta step up. If you want more of God, He wants more of us. He wants all of you, you have all of Him. We got to get out of the way. Because I'm looking for the glory. I'm looking to see things that God has shown me that I have tasted of. I've seen it down in Haiti. I've seen it in other countries. I've seen the blind eyes open. I've seen God move miraculously. I've seen bones that were broken instantly healed in the power of God. I've seen lumps and, 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 and these goiters and stuff and people's bellies suddenly disappear just like that. Washed out by the blood of Jesus Christ. I've seen Hallelujah. my own eyes. <laughs> oh. See, once you taste of something, you, you just got to have one. Come on. Come on. See, hamburger ain't no more, ain't, ain't no good after you have some filet and young with a little rye, rye, bacon wrapped around. <laughs> hamburger just don't do it no more. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> God gave you a word a while back. He said, we need to start believing God for the impossible. Yeah. That's right. We need to begin to see God for how big he is. Yeah. See, we get so narrow-minded, we get so fixated on the littleness of, of us, and, 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 and we look at our strength, we look at our wisdom, we look at our ability, we look at our little churches and stuff. We need to get our eyes focused on Him. Yes. It's not us anyway. That's right. That's In fact, when we become nothing, He'll become everything. 
Come on. When you become nothing, he can do something with you. That's right. And then what he said, he called things out of nothing. So when we become nothing, he can call us into something. That's right. As long as we're something, he can't do nothing with us. But if we become nothing, he can do all things through us. We can walk like Jesus. And he said, greater works. I'm looking for the greater ones. I'm looking for miracles. No other generation has ever seen and known upon this earth. I'm looking for things that bend the very laws of nature. Uh, ooh, hallelujah. You know what I'm talking about? Uh -huh. see, see, God can make water go up in the air. <laughs> yeah. See, God can make the apple tree, the apple tree apple go up in the air. He can, he can change the very course of nature. That's my God. You see, our puny little problems ain't nothing in the eyes of God. You look it up, it's done. Mm. See, we, we, we think in terms of, you know, 10,000, maybe, maybe I got big faith, or $100,000. No, see, my God's got billions. You can't even, you, we don't have a word in the English language with, with, with what God has. Uh, you know what I'm saying? We keep having to change it with the computers. I think, what are, what, are, what are we on now? We have gigabytes, and now we're up to something bigger than that. What's the, what comes out of the gigabytes? The, 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 it starts with a T. Anybody know what I'm talking about? On the computer, when you get memory on the computer, it's no longer gigabytes. It's now something else. We had to take it to another level because we kept running out of all that memory because it keeps up on with new software that needs up more. Well, my God, go beyond that. See, the earth is the Lord, the fullness thereof. Everything's in. If He were hungry, He wouldn't ask us why. He has everything. But see, we don't believe. We gotta get holy. We we gotta get righteous. Why? So we have power with God. That we can see God do what He wants to do. Why? For the whole purpose that many will see and believe and turn and surrender themselves to the Lord Jesus Christ. It's not about me, it's about harvest. It's not about me, it's about souls. It's about the kingdom of God. It's about the manifestation of God's presence to bring souls into His kingdom, to save, to prepare a people for Jesus Christ. It's about souls. Not about money and glory and, and accolades and buildings and, and all that stuff. It's about souls for the kingdom of Jesus Christ. And when you're holy, that's what's in you. You just want to see somebody get saved. Somebody get, get on fire and do more than you. Get, 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 go beyond you. Be greater than you. Be, be more powerful. More, be, be more serious. Be more concentrated than you. You just want to see somebody get up there and, and make you look, look, look like nothing in what they're doing. Because then I say, that's my bride, you know. that's, that's, my, that's, my, that's my child. That's, that's, that's mine. That's, see, you can do it all the thing, but that's, that's mine. Oh, uh, my God. Oh, my God. Hallelujah, God. Amen. Oh, my God. Without holiness, uh, no one shall see the Lord. If you're not holy, repent and believe. If you're not hot, if you're not on fire for God, Jesus said, repent and believe. Open your heart. Humble yourself. Repent and believe. He'll do the rest. Every part of the redemption of Christ is supernatural power. By the Spirit and the blood. Supernatural power. The working of God raises you up in the of life. It takes the power of God to redeem you. He doesn't wave a magic wand and, and, and declare you holy and righteous. He reaches down in his power from the energy, the working of God. In Colossians chapter 2, he says the energy, the working of God, circumcises your heart and raises you up into this newness of life. Dead to sin and alive to him. Let's pray.